Belarusian language. Belarusian is an official language of Belarus, along with Russian, and is also spoken in Russia, Poland and Ukraine. Before Belarus gained independence from the Soviet Union in 1991, the language was only known in English as Belorussian or Belarusian, transliterating the Russian name, Belaruski Yazyk, or alternatively as White Ruthenian, or White Russian. Following independence, it has acquired the additional name Belarusian. Belarusian is one of the East Slavic languages and shares many grammatical and lexical features with other members of the group. To some extent, Russian, Rusin, Ukrainian, and Belarusian are mutually intelligible. Its predecessor stage is known as Ruthenian, in turn descended from Old East Slavic. In the first Belarus census of 1999, the Belarusian language was declared as a language spoken at home by about 3,686,000 Belarusian citizens. About 6,984,000 of Belarusians declared it their mother tongue. Other sources, such as Ethnologue, put the figure at approximately 2.5 million active speakers. According to a study done by the Belarusian government in 2009, 72% of Belarusians speak Russian at home while Belarusian is actively used by only 11.9% of Belarusians. Approximately 29.4% of Belarusians can write, speak, and read Belarusian, while 52.5% can only read and speak it. According to UNESCO Atlas of the World's Languages in Danger, Belarusian language is stated as vulnerable. Although closely related to other East Slavic languages, especially Ukrainian, Belarusian phonology is distinct in a number of ways. The phoneme inventory of the modern Belarusian language consists of 45 to 54 phonemes, 6 vowels, and 39 to 48 consonants, depending on how they are counted. When the nine geminate consonants are excluded as mere variations, there are 39 consonants, and excluding rare consonants further decreases the count. The number 48 includes all consonant sounds, including variations and rare sounds, which may be semantically distinct in the modern Belarusian language. The Belarusian alphabet is a variant of the Cyrillic script, which was first used as an alphabet for the Old Church Slavonic language. The modern Belarusian form was defined in 1918, and consists of 32 letters. Before that, Belarusian had also been written in the Belarusian Latin alphabet, the Belarusian Arabic alphabet and the Hebrew alphabet. The glagolitic script had been used, sporadically, until the 11th or 12th century. There are several systems of romanizing written Belarusian text in existence, see Romanization of Belarusian. Standardized Belarusian grammar in its modern form was adopted in 1959, with minor amendments in 1985. It was developed from the initial form set down by Branislaw Doroshkevich. Historically, there had existed several other alternative standardized forms of Belarusian grammar. It is mainly based on the Belarusian folk dialects of Minsk Vilnius region. Belarusian grammar is mostly synthetic and partly analytic, and overall is quite similar to Russian grammar. Belarusian orthography, however, differs significantly from Russian orthography in some respects due to the fact that it is a phonetic orthography that closely represents the surface phonology, whereas Russian orthography represents the underlying morphophonology. The most significant instance of this is in the representation of vowel reduction, and in particular akani, the merger of unstressed slash a slash and slash o slash comma which exists in both Russian and Belarusian. Belarusian always spells this merged sound as, whereas Russian uses either or, according to what the underlying phoneme is. This means that Belarusian noun and verb paradigms, as written, have large numbers of instances of alternations between written and, whereas no such alternations exist in the corresponding written paradigms in Russian. This can significantly complicate the task of foreign speakers in learning these paradigms, but, on the other hand, it makes spelling easier for native speakers. Besides the literary norm, there exist two main dialects of the Belarusian language, the northeastern and the southwestern. In addition, there exists the transitional Middle Belarusian dialect group and the separate West Palesian dialect group. The northeastern and the southwestern dialects are separated by a hypothetical line Ashmiani Minsk Babruyas Kamil, with the area of the Middle Belarusian dialect group placed on and along this line. The northeastern dialect is chiefly characterized by the soft sounding R, and the southwestern dialect is chiefly characterized by the hard sounding R. The West Palesian dialect group is more distinct linguistically close to Ukrainian language in many aspects and is separated by the conventional line Prujania Vatsavishi Tikani Luninye Stolen.
There is a high degree of mutual intelligibility among Belarusian, Russian, and Ukrainian languages. Belarusian has 80% mutual intelligibility with Ukrainian, 75% with Russian, and 55% with the Polish language. Within East Slavic, the Belarusian language is most closely related to Ukrainian. The modern Belarusian language was redeveloped on the base of the vernacular spoken remnants of the old Belarusian language, surviving in the ethnic Belarusian territories in the 19th century. The end of the 18th century is the usual conventional borderline between the old Belarusian and modern Belarusian stages of development. By the end of the 18th century, Belarusian was still common among the minor nobility in the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Jan Chechso in the 1840s had mentioned that even his generation's grandfathers preferred speaking Belarusian. In its vernacular form, it was the language of the smaller town dwellers and of the peasantry and it had been the language of oral folklore. Teaching in Belarusian was conducted mainly in schools run by the Basilian Order. The development of Belarusian in the 19th century was strongly influenced by the political conflict in the territories of the former GDL, between the Russian imperial authorities, trying to consolidate their rule over the joint provinces, and the Polish and Polonized nobility, trying to bring back its pre partitions rule. In summary, the first two decades of the 19th century had seen the unprecedented prosperity of Polish culture and language in the former GDL lands, and had prepared the heir of such famous Belarusians by birth, Poles by choice, as Mikovic and Syra Kamla. The era had seen the effective completion of the Polonization of the lowest level of the nobility, the further reduction of the area of use of contemporary Belarusian, and the effective folklorization of Belarusian culture due both to the state of the people's education and to the strong positions of Polish and Polonized nobility, it was only after the 1880s 1890s that the educated Belarusian element, still shunned because of peasant origin, began to appear in state offices. In 1846, ethnographer Paweł Szpilewski prepared a Belarusian grammar on the basis of the folk dialects of the Minsk region. However, the Russian Academy of Sciences refused to print his submission, on the basis that it had not been prepared in a sufficiently scientific manner. From the mid-1830s ethnographic works began to appear, and tentative attempts to study the language were instigated. The Belarusian literary tradition began to reform, based on the folk language, initiated by the works of Vincent Dunin Martsinkiewicz. See also, Jan Chechso, Jan Berchevsky. At the beginning of the 1860s, both the Russian and Polish parties in Belarusian lands had begun to realize that the decisive role in the upcoming conflicts way shifting to the peasantry, overwhelmingly Belarusian. So a large amount of propaganda appeared, targeted at the peasantry and written in Belarusian, notably, the anti-Russian, anti-Tsarist, anti-Eastern Orthodox manifesto in the newspaper Peasants' Truth by Kalinovsky, and anti-Polish, anti-revolutionary, pro-Orthodox booklets and poems. The advent of the all-Russian Narodniki and Belarusian national movements renewed interest in the Belarusian language, Bahushevich, Yefim Karski, Dovnar Zapolsky, Besanov, Pipin, Shin, Nasevich. The Belarusian literary tradition was also renewed. It was in these times that F. Bahushevich made his famous appeal to Belarusians, Do not forsake our language, lest you pass away. In course of the 1897 Russian Empire census, about 5.89 million people declared themselves speakers of Belarusian. The end of the 19th century, however, still showed that the urban language of Belarusian towns remained either Polish or Russian. The same census showed that towns with a population greater than 50,000 had fewer than a tenth Belarusian speakers. This state of affairs greatly contributed to a perception that Belarusian was a rural and uneducated language. However, the census was a major breakthrough for the first steps of the Belarusian national self-awareness and identity, since it clearly showed to the imperial authorities and the still strong Polish minority that the population and the language were neither Polish nor Russian. The rising influence of socialist ideas advanced the emancipation of the Belarusian language still further. The fundamental works of Yefim Karski marked a turning point in the scientific perception of Belarusian. The ban on publishing books and papers in Belarusian was officially removed. The unprecedented surge of national feeling in the 20th century, especially among the workers and peasants, particularly after the events of 1905, gave momentum to the intensive development of Belarusian literature and press. During the 19th and early 20th century, there was no normative Belarusian grammar. 
Authors wrote as they saw fit, usually representing the particularities of different Belarusian dialects. The scientific groundwork for the introduction of a truly scientific and modern grammar of the Belarusian language was laid down by the linguist Yefim Karski. By the early 1910s, the continuing lack of a codified Belarusian grammar was becoming intolerably obstructive in the opinion of uniformitarian prescriptivist Stutt and Russian academician Sheikhmatov, chair of the Russian Language and Literature Department of St. Petersburg University, approached the board of the Belarusian newspaper Nasaniva with a proposal that a Belarusian linguist be trained under his supervision in order to be able to create documentation of the grammar. Initially, the famous Belarusian poet Maxim Bodanovich was to be entrusted with this work. However, Bodanovich's poor health precluded his living in the climate of St. Petersburg, so Branislav Taroshkevich, a fresh graduate of the Vilnius Lyceum No. 2, was selected for the task. In the Belarusian community, great interest was vested in this enterprise. The already famous Belarusian poet Yanka Kupala, in his letter to Taroshkevich, urged him to hurry with his much-needed work. Taroshkevich had been working on the preparation of the grammar during 1912-1917, with the help and supervision of Sheikh Matov and Karski. Taroshkevich had completed the work by the autumn of 1917, even moving from the tumultuous Petrograd of 1917 to the relative calm of Finland in order to be able to complete it uninterrupted. By the summer of 1918, it became obvious that there were insurmountable problems with the printing of Taroshkevich's grammar in Petrograd, a lack of paper type and qualified personnel. Meanwhile, his grammar had apparently been planned to be adopted in the workers' and peasants' schools of Belarus that were to be set up, so Taroshkevich was permitted to print his book abroad. In June 1918, he arrived in Vilnius, via Finland. The Belarusian committee petitioned the administration to allow the book to be printed. Finally, the first edition of the Belarusian grammar for schools was printed. There existed at least two other contemporary attempts at codifying the Belarusian grammar. In 1915, Reverend Balyaslav Pakopka had prepared a Belarusian grammar using the Latin script. Belarusian linguist S. M. Nyakrashevich considered Pakopka's grammar unscientific and ignorant of the principles of the language. But Pakopka's grammar was reportedly taught in an unidentified number of schools, from 1918 for an unspecified period. Another grammar was supposedly jointly prepared by A. Lutskevich and Ya. Stankevich, and differed from Taroshkevich's grammar somewhat in the resolution of some key aspects. On December 22, 1915, Paul von Hindenburg issued an order on schooling in German army-occupied territories in the Russian Empire, banning schooling in Russian and including the Belarusian language in an exclusive list of four languages made mandatory in the respective native schooling systems. School attendance was not made mandatory, though. Passports at this time were bilingual, in German and in one of the native languages. Also at this time, Belarusian preparatory schools, printing houses, press organs were open. After the 1917 February Revolution in Russia, the Belarusian language became an important factor in political activities in the Belarusian lands. In the Belarusian People's Republic, Belarusian was used as the only official language. Subsequently, in the Belarusian SSR, Belarusian was decreed to be one of the four official languages. A decree of July 15, 1924 confirmed that the Belarusian, Russian, Yiddish and Polish languages had equal status in Soviet Belarus. In the BSSR, Taroshkevich's grammar had been officially accepted for use in state schooling after its republication in unchanged form, first in 1922 by Yazep Lyasik under his own name as Practical Grammar. P. Art. I., then in 1923 by the Belarusian State Publishing House under the title Belarusian Language. Grammar. Ed. I., 1923, also by Ya. Lyasik. In 1925, Lyasik added two new chapters, addressing the orthography of compound words and partly modifying the orthography of assimilated words. From this point on, Belarusian grammar had been popularized and taught in the educational system in that form. The ambiguous and insufficient development of several components of Taroshkevich's grammar was perceived to be the cause of some problems in practical usage, and this led to discontent with the grammar. In 1924-25, Lyasik and his brother Anton Lyasik prepared and published their project of orthographic reform, proposing a number of radical changes. A fully phonetic orthography was introduced. One of the most distinctive changes brought in was the principle of a kanji, where an unstressed o, 
pronounced in both Russian and Belarusian as slash a slash, is written as the Belarusian Academic Conference on Reform of the Orthography and Alphabet was convened in 1926. After discussions on the project, the conference made resolutions on some of the problems. However, the Lyasik Brothers project had not addressed all the problematic issues, so the conference was not able to address all of those. As the outcome of the conference, the Orthographic Commission was created to prepare the project of the actual reform. This was instigated on October 1, 1927 headed by S. Nyek Rashevich, with the following principal guidelines of its work adopted. During its work in 1927-29, the Commission had actually prepared the project for spelling reform. The resulting project had included both completely new rules and existing rules in unchanged and changed forms, some of the changes being the work of the Commission itself, and others resulting from the resolutions off the Belarusian Academic Conference, reapproved by the Commission. Notably, the use of the before the combination's consonant plus iotified vowel, which had been previously denounced as highly redundant, was cancelled. However, the complete resolution of the highly important issue of the orthography of unstressed was not achieved. Both the resolutions of the Belarusian Academic Conference and the project of the Orthographic Commission caused much disagreement in the Belarusian academic environment. Several elements of the project were to be put under appeal in the higher bodies of power. In West Belarus, under Polish rule, the Belarusian language was at a disadvantage. Schooling in the Belarusian language was obstructed, and printing in Belarusian experienced political oppression. The prestige of the Belarusian language in the Western Belarus of the period hinged significantly on the image of the BSSR being the true Belarusian home. This image, however, was strongly disrupted by the purges of national democrats in BSSR and by the subsequent grammar reform. Doroshkevich's grammar was republished five times in Western Belarus. However, the fifth edition was the version diverging from the previously published one, which Doroshkevich had prepared disregarding the Belarusian Academic Conference resolutions. In 1929-30, the communist authorities of Soviet Belarus made a series of drastic crackdowns against the supposed National Democratic Counter-Revolution. Effectively, Entire generations of socialist Belarusian national activists in the first quarter of the 20th century were wiped out of political, scientific and social existence. Only the most famous cult figures were spared. However, a new power group in Belarusian science quickly formed during these power shifts, under the virtual leadership of the head of the Philosophy Institute of the Belarusian Academy of Sciences, Academician S. Ya. Vyumpsen represented the new spirit of political life in Soviet Belarus. The reform of Belarusian grammar had been brought out quite unexpectedly, supposedly, Stank 1936, with the project published in the central newspaper of the Belarusian Communist Party on June 28, 1933 and the decree of the Council of People's Commissars of BSSR issued on 1933-08-28, to gain the status of law on September 16, 1933. There had been some post facto speculations, too, that the 1930 project of the reform had been given for the purification to the NATSTEMS competition in the Academy of Sciences, which would explain the blocked nature of the differences between the 1930 and 1933 versions. Peculiarly, Jan Stankovich, in his notable critique of the reform, Stank 1936, failed to mention the 1930 project, dating the reform project to 1932. The reform resulted in the grammar officially used, with further amendments, in Belarusian SSR and modern Belarus. Sometimes this grammar is called the official grammar of the Belarusian language, to distinguish it from the pre reform grammar, known as the classic grammar or Taraskivica. It is also known as Narkomelka, after the word Narkomat, a Belarusian abbreviation for People's Commissariat. The latter term bears a derogatory connotation. The officially announced causes for the reform were the reform had been accompanied by a fervent press campaign directed against the Natstems not yet giving up. The decree had been named on changing and simplifying Belarusian spelling, but the bulk of the changes had been introduced into the grammar. Jan Stankovich in his critique of the reform talked about 25 changes, with one of them being strictly orthographical and 24 relating to both orthography and grammar. Stank 1936. Many of the changes in the orthography proper were, in fact, simply implementations of earlier proposals made by people who had subsequently suffered political suppression. Padluzny 2004
are, the morphological principle in the orthography had been strengthened, which also had been proposed in 1920s. The removal of the influences of the pollinization had been represented, effectively, by the the removing of the artificial barriers between the Russian and Belarusian languages had, according to Stankiewicz, moved the normative Belarusian morphology and syntax closer to their Russian counterparts, often removing from use the indigenous features of the Belarusian language. Stank 1936 Stankiewicz also observed that some components of the reform had moved the Belarusian grammar to the grammars of other Slavonic languages, which would hardly be its goal. Stank 1936 in West Belarus, there had been some voices raised against the reform, chiefly by the non-communist slash non-socialist wing of the Belarusian national scene. Jan Stankiewicz was named to the Belarusian Scientific Society, Belarusian National Committee and Society of the Friends of Belarusian Linguistics at Vilno University. Certain political and scientific groups and figures went on using the pre-reform orthography and grammar, however, thus multiplying and differing versions. However, the reformed grammar and orthography had been used, too, for example during the process of Sarhe Pridetsky in 1936. During the occupation of Belarus by Nazi Germany, the Belarusian collaborationists influenced newspapers and schools to use the Belarusian language. This variant did not use any of the post-1933 changes in vocabulary, orthography and grammar. Much publishing in Belarusian Latin script was done. In general, in the publications of the Soviet partisan movement in Belarus, the normative 1934 grammar was used. After the Second World War, several major factors influenced the development of the Belarusian language. The most important was the implementation of rapprochement and unification of Soviet people policy, which resulted by the 1980s in the Russian language effectively and officially assuming the role of the principal means of communication, with Belarusian relegated to a secondary role. The post-war growth in the number of publications in the Belarusian language in BSSR drastically lagged behind those in Russian. The use of Belarusian as the main language of education was gradually limited to rural schools and humanitarian faculties. The BSSR counterpart of the USSR law on strengthening of ties between school and real life and on the further development of popular education in the USSR, adopted in 1959, along with introduction of a mandatory eight-year school education made it possible for the parents of pupils to opt for non-mandatory studying of the second language of instruction, which would be Belarusian in a Russian language school and vice versa. However, for example in the 1955-56 school year, there were 95% of schools with Russian as the primary language of instruction, and 5% with Belarusian as primary language of instruction. While officially much lauded, the language was popularly represented as an uncultured, rural language of rural people. That was the source of concern for the nationally minded and caused, for example, the series of publications by Beres Sechonka in 1957-61 and the text named Letter to a Russian Friend by Ayoksi Ikaka. The BSSR Communist Party leader Kirill Mazarov made some tentative moves to strengthen the role of Belarusian language in the second half of the 1950s. However, the support for the Belarusian language could also be easily considered too strong and even identified with the support of Belarusian nationalists and fascists. After the beginning of perestroika and the relaxing of political control in the late 1980s, a new campaign in support of the Belarusian language was mounted in BSSR, expressed in the letter of 58 and other publications, producing a certain level of popular support and resulting in the BSSR Supreme Soviet ratifying law on languages requiring the strengthening of the role of Belarusian in state and civic structures. A discussion on problems in Belarusian orthography and on the further development of the language was held from 1935 to 1941. From 1949 to 1957, this continued, although it was deemed there was a need to amend some unwarranted changes to the 1933 reform. The Orthography Commission, headed by Yakub Kolas, set up the project in about 1951, but it was approved only in 1957, and the normative rules were published in 1959. This grammar had been accepted as normative for the Belarusian language since then, receiving minor practical changes in the 1985 edition. A project to correct parts of the 1959 grammar was conducted from 2006 to 2007. After Belarus became independent in 1991, the Belarusian language gained in prestige and popular interest. However, 
the implementation of the 1992-94 Long Languages took place in such a way that it provoked public protests and was dubbed landslide Belarusization and undemocratic by those opposited in 1992-94. In a controversial referendum held on May 14, 1995 the Belarusian language lost its exclusive status as the only state language. State support for Belarusian language and culture in general has dwindled since then and Russian is dominant in everyday life in today's Belarus. In a 2006 article, Roy Medvedev compared the position of the Belarusian language in Belarus with that of the Irish language in the Republic of Ireland. A spelling reform of the official Belarusian language, making the spelling of some words more similar to Taraskevich's system, was decided on July 23, 2008, and went into effect on September 1, 2010. Under the regime of the authoritarian President Alexander Lukashenko, members of the Belarusian-speaking minority in Belarus complain about a discrimination of the Belarusian language in Belarus. Despite a formally equal status of Russian and Belarusian, Russian is primarily used by the Belarusian government, and cases of discrimination against the Belarusian language are not rare, even though the discrimination is not institutionalized. Authorities occasionally make minor concessions to demands for a widening of the usage of the Belarusian language. Organizations promoting Belarusian language such as the Franciszok Skorina Belarusian Language Society were reported being object of attacks by Belarus-based Russian neo-Nazi groups in the 1990s and 2000s. The Franciszok Skorina Belarusian Language Society has reported about the following categories of violations of the rights of Belarusian speakers in Belarus. Belarusian speakers are facing numerous obstacles when trying to arrange Belarusian language education for their children. There are no Belarusian language universities in the country. In its 2016 Country Human Rights on Belarus report, the U.S. State Department also stated that there was discrimination against those who sought to use the Belarusian language. Because the government viewed many proponents of the Belarusian language as political opponents, authorities continued to harass and intimidate academic and cultural groups that sought to promote Belarusian and routinely rejected proposals to widen use of the language, the report said. In the 2010s the situation of Belarusian has started to change slightly due to the efforts of language advocacy institutions, of individual representatives of such educational, cultural, scientific and linguistic organizations as the Franciszok Skorina Belarusian Language Society, the Belarus Academy of Sciences, the Belarusian Writers Union, and in response to the endeavors of pro-Belarusian public figures from the media and communication field, musicians, philosophers, entrepreneurs and benefactors. And despite the language losing its exclusive position in the wake of the 1995 Belarusian referendum, new signs of the spread of Belarusian have appeared trickling down into Belarusian society, with advertising campaigns supporting the cause, the simplified version of the Belarusian Latin alphabet on the metro map being introduced into the messages of the transport network, dedicated advertising festivals like AD. Knock up holding marketing communication in Belarusian, and informal language courses having sprung up in Minsk and around Belarus and spurring further interest of people, especially of young people, in developing good Belarusian communication skills in everyday life. There exists an alternative literary norm of the Belarusian language, named. There are a number of names under which the Belarusian language has been known, both contemporary and historical. Some of the most dissimilar are from the old Belarusian period. Belarusian is represented by the ISO 639 code B or Bel, or more specifically by IETF language tags B1959 ACAD or BTRAS. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.